This video is brought to you by Squarespace. I've been looking for a good video storage setup ever since I hired my assistant Vadim a year and a half ago. There are a lot of options on the market, but none of them fit my needs, so I was always making a compromise. Regular hard drives are cheap and they have a lot of space, but they're slow and the pain to use if you have a lot of data like I do. Like uh, the five terabytes you guys see here, the eight terabytes, there's a lot of regular hard drives. SSDs like this two terabyte SAN disk are fast with really great seek times, but they're very limited in space and very expensive. On top of that, if it dies, your data is gone and unlike a hard drive, you can't recover it. One option is a RAID array like this Thunderbolt 3 Drobo. It has fast speeds, drive failure protection, and a lot of space, but they can only be connected to one computer at a time, just like all of these other drives, which sucks if you have a team. Now Drobo also has NAS RAIDs or network attached storage versions of this, which seem like a good idea because you can connect to it from multiple computers at the same time until you start looking at the speeds, which are under 100 megabytes per second on all the affordable versions because they use gigabit ethernet. This makes it so that uh, this four terabyte external portable drive is actually faster than a RAID 5 array, which once again sucks and it's really not usable for video editing. So what do you do if you have more than one editor and want fast speeds? Traditionally, you get a 10 gigabit ethernet server, but that's complicated and requires network switches, adapters, and a lot of time and headaches to get it running. Now there are a few companies that can get you the hardware and do the setup for you, but you gotta make sure you have at least $10,000 to spend, and that's on the low end. And that's where these QNAPs come in that are gonna give you everything that you want and solve your problems without all of the headaches and setups and any other issues. Let me move this. I don't want to drop those. I still have data uh, on all of these backups and stuff, but let's get these out of the way. These two QNAPs, I've been uh, testing this guy for about three weeks. This guy's brand new, just a few days, and they are amazing. Uh, just to let you guys know, this video is not sponsored by QNAP. Um, I actually bought this myself, but this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Before I tell you about how awesome these QNAPs are, I wanna give a big shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I've built five websites using Squarespace and I've been recommending them for over four years now. So when they reached out and wanted to sponsor my channel, it was a no brainer. Whether you're wanting to build a portfolio site, e-commerce, blog, or anything else, they've got you covered. They have an easy to use website builder and great templates with automatic versions for mobile devices. Go ahead and follow the link in the video description to get started on your free trial with no credit card required and to get 10% off your first purchase. Like I said at the start of the video, I've been looking for a way to have a lot of storage space so I can have previous projects on there and so that I don't have to dig through all my external hard drives to find where those projects and clips are. I wanna have fast storage speeds and minimum latency so I can edit off the storage space. I wanna have redundancy so I don't have to worry about losing my data if a hard drive dies and having to make tons of extra copies and then dealing with all, all of that. And most of all, I wanna be able to access uh, the array from multiple different computers at the same time so Vadim and I can collaborate, work on projects without having to unplug hard drives, plugging it into a different computer, make copies and transfer and deal with all of the headache that I've been dealing with for the past year and a half. Oh yeah, I also don't wanna spend more than a car on this system. These two QNAPs finally have all of that and more. I've been using this 12 bay for about three weeks and it's ridiculous. This thing has been on the market for a few months now, but not that many people know about it. I'll have a detailed full review on it soon, so make sure to subscribe so you guys don't miss out on that. But for now, I'll give you guys a short rundown about how it works, along with its little brother. This thing is basically a computer, a server, a network switch, all in one. It has eight three and a half inch slots, four two and a half inch slots, and then two M.2 SSDs internally. Along with that, it has four Thunderbolt 3 ports, two 10 gigabit ethernet ports, and a bunch of other ethernet ports, USBs, HDMIs, and a bunch of other connections as well. It's also running 16 gigabytes of RAM that can be upgraded to 64 gigabyte and a Skylake i5 processor. They have versions all the way up to an i7 as well. Now this thing isn't cheap, but it's a really good value. As you guys know, I have no problem building computers and messing around with custom installations for Hackintoshes, but with all of the research I did into making my own server for video editing, it's just really not worth it when you can buy one of these. The biggest thing that sets it apart is it's four Thunderbolt 3 ports. Typical Thunderbolt 3 storage devices like a Lacey, Pegasus, or GTEC RAIDs are fast, but they can only have one computer connected at a time. Same thing for this Drobo. 
QNAP has gotten around that by creating an Ethernet network over the Thunderbolt 3 cable, and the convenience and performance is great. We've been using this guy with 8 8TB hard drives in RAID 6, meaning I can have 2 hard drives die and still not lose any data, and that gives us roughly 48TB of usable space. You can also add in M.2s or regular SSDs as cache to speed it up, but we really didn't need to. I've gotten 1600MB per second read speed from this system in RAID 6. Yes. 1,600 megabytes per second, that's more than three times faster than a standard SSD. Now if you're using an NFS connection, which is a preference for video editing, my iMac gets about 800 megabytes per second read and 700 megabytes per second write, still faster than an SSD. Vadim and I have been simultaneously editing video, even full resolution 4K multicam, and there's no slowdown or stutter at all. It works perfectly. I wanted to push this thing to its limits, so I connected all of my Macs to it and I ran Blackmagic speed tests, which pushed drives to their limits and I got a combined speed of 1760 write and 1445 read speeds all at the same time. No slowdowns or issues, this thing just rocked it. The iMac had a connection of over 400 megabytes per second read and over 600 megabytes per second write, and the slowest connection was from my 2016 13-inch MacBook Pro at over 300 megabytes per second read and write. Now that's fast enough to read 8K red raw footage at 60 frames per second, or a 4-camera 4K ProRes 422 multicam edit at full resolution playback, neither of which this laptop can handle. Basically, I'm just super impressed. What's even more impressive is how easy it was to set it up and how seamlessly it works. Oftentimes you read over a spec sheet and it sounds good on paper, but once you start using a product you find a ton of quirks and issues. I was honestly expecting to get some of that with this product, but the opposite happened. The system did exactly what I wanted it to do, but I also found a bunch of other features that it offers. This is a full on server and QNAP's operating system is impressive. There's a huge list of apps and things you could do with either of these, which I'll cover in detail in my review, but I'm able to log into this thing from my cell phone or any internet connection, monitor all the statistics, look at any photos or videos. It'll even take raw 4K clips from my camera and transcode them on the fly so I can stream them to my phone just like you would from YouTube. I can share a download link of any file or folder, so it basically replaces Dropbox, and I can back up all of my computers and cell phones and have all the photos from my iPhone automatically back up and download into this device, basically exactly what iCloud does. I can plug in a hard drive and have all the data automatically be transferred to this NAS, and also back up the complete NAS to the cloud or to another NAS that is anywhere else in the world, and much, much more than that. Now with all of that said, this thing provides massive value for the money, but it's still not cheap, especially when you consider the cost of buying eight hard drives, especially good quality ones that are rated for NAS use. That's where this little brother comes in. This thing just hit the market and it is an amazing value, even more impressive than this guy is. This thing has all of the capabilities of its bigger brother, but at less than one third of the cost. You have two Thunderbolt 3 ports instead of four and a single 10 gigabit ethernet instead of two, but keep in mind, you can connect that to a switch and have a bunch of computers be able to access it. It supports four three and a half inch hard drives instead of eight and without the SSDs or two and a half inch plugins that are up here, but it still does have two M.2 ports inside so you can plug in SSDs and use that for caching or use QNAP smart tiering tech. Now you will end up getting slower speeds because you have half the drives compared to this guy, but I'm getting about 575 megabytes per second read and 400 megabytes per second write speeds in RAID 5. So one of those drives are for redundancy, giving us roughly 24 terabytes of usable space. Having two computers pulling at the same time, each computer gets about 350 megabytes per second read and write. So that's enough for 8K red raw or four streams of full resolution 4K ProRes on each computer. Now when you include the cost of the hard drives themselves, this thing is about five times cheaper than this guy, but it has basically all of the software features and the ability to have multiple editors connect to it and that 10 gigabit ethernet connection with two uh, Thunderbolt 3 ports. So it really is a great value value and it's more than fast enough for the vast majority of small teams like what I have. 
Now I think this thing is gonna sell really well, even to those who don't have multiple editors. The price is cheaper than a lot of um, options on the market that are only able to connect to one computer at a time. And even if you don't have a team that you're working with, just having the ability to be able to access all of the data from anywhere in the world from your cell phone, see what's going on, be able to download and share footage, that is just so convenient that it makes it uh, much more worth it than a standard um, RAID array that you plug into your computer. So if you've been looking for an affordable shared storage solution, this is it. Either the smaller unit, if you have a small team like I do, or you're just by yourself, you wanna be able to access your data and have uh, the future proofingness of being able to connect multiple people to it, or if you need to uh, connect multiple people or if you have a higher budget, this super quick 1740 megabyte per second beast right over here. So thank you guys for watching this video. I'm gonna have a full review on this guy in the near future and then maybe a little bit later followed by this unit since I've had this guy for less time. If you guys have any questions before then, go ahead and ask in that comment section below. And if you know anybody who has been looking for a setup like this and it's just not been reasonable or affordable, please share this video with them. And if you guys are gonna be in Facebook groups or on forums and people are gonna be asking about this, please share this video as well. I wanna get uh, the info out on these devices. Now, if you guys are looking for a website, Squarespace has got you covered. Big shout out to them for sponsoring this video. I recommend them just as much as I recommend these two devices right here. And make sure you guys use the link in the video description to save 10% off and so that they keep sponsoring the channel. Uh, like I said, I feel like a salesman <laughs> for these two things right here, but I have just been doing so much research in the past trying to figure out what hardware adapters I'll need software. And I know whenever you start digging with stuff like that, you're gonna spend hours and hours and more like days and days getting everything set up and working the way it needs to work and you're really not going to save any money you'll probably lose money since you're not doing your job you know editing and shooting videos so thank you guys for watching i definitely appreciate it i will see you guys in the next video